the fact that there's no public sphere, probably in the sense of öffentlichkeit and of public rights, it is not true. The fact that there are questionable politicians going in and out, that doesn't uh, change the basic character of bourgeois society that works through jurisprudence, through jurisdiction and through legislation. One of the, the, the fundamental methods uh, in the last 300 years of imposing discipline, a discipline I disagree with and I'm very happy to, 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 to besiege and to attack, but uh, in, order to, in order to attack our enemy, it is quite important to understand him or her or them or it. And, um, and um, to say that the fact that you know, a, a politician has been formerly a private banker or after his term as a chan federal chancellor is, in Gapstrom, is really not interesting. It is not nice, it is not seemly, uh, it is perhaps dishonest, but when somebody acts as uh, a responsible politician with the prerogatives and the rights of his function is one thing and then he leaves and does something else is also something else. And the, f the way in which capitalism as a system influences politics, legislation, jurisprudence, and all that is not informal. The informal part of it is quite important, but it's much more important how the whole constitutional system, including the European constitutional system, imposes capitalism as a legal framework which has been well understood by somebody called Karl Marx, who said in the capital that one of the most important thing about an analyzing capitalism is to understand that equality and liberty in the capitalist system are not only epiphenomenal appearances, but on, from one aspect, these societies are free and equal, and through their version of political rights are imposing exploitation and oppression and inequality on citizens, because these people, are, you know, Citizens exist, but actually, you know, the separation of citizens from private persons is the basic characteristic of bourgeois society, and this is assured by the legal system. It is not corruption, which is the main method through which, or, you know, illicit influences, the method by which the order is imposed. It is the legal, very legal, very legitimate, very, very public, decrees and laws and constitutions and armies and police and courts and parliaments through which the system is being imposed. That's one thing. And secondly, I didn't understand you, Carl, when you said that uh, on the one hand there have been the public sphere by which you meant the street and then parliament and the media uh, uh, are those not public institutions? Are they not public in the sense of öffentlich? Are they not known? You know, the, the, what is structured as domination and what is indeed a free space for the citizens for their self-activity, they're both in the public domain and in the public domain there is something what we call struggle. And um, so, so it is not you know, I, I really uh, would warn anybody to, to, to think that the uh, dominion of capital is something illegal, illicit and secret. It's out there, it's visible, it's official, it's legitimate, it's recognized and it is, you know, and there's a complex system in which by many levels, including the European level and the world level and so on and so forth. So this brings me to your questions. Um, well, first of all, when you ask, should we dismantle the European... Well, should we? Well, okay, I'm for it. Who, who will come with me? And uh, so, uh, so it's, that's a good question, but also indecent. Uh, because, because we just don't have the force to do it. But what should we wish? Most certainly not a dispositive of oppression like the European Union and like the bourgeois nation-states as well. Of course they should be destroyed. 
Well, is there any question about this in this room? Um, well, Marxists, aren't we? Well, you know, uh, well, you know, and we should indeed destroy them if we can. The question is, when do we, uh, you know, when, what do we, well, meanwhile, meanwhile, you know, of course, you have to exercise pressure from the outside. Why should we exercise pressure from the outside? Because we're weak. Why are we acting on the streets? And why are we not, not taking, taking over the banks and the ministries and the army and the police and the chief prosecutor's office and the universities and so on? Well, because we don't have the force. And the fact is that, that, that bourgeois society is of a nature that gives us a very small room of maneuver, very small, but still exists in the room of maneuver, in which we can, you know, use the cleavages between the various parts of the public sphere and in which we can uh, insist on our rights, in which we can try to influence governments. Well, after all, aren't you participating in elections? Of course, you know. You know, honest communist parties are, you know, running in elections, aren't they? And because they're using this for the limited, for the limited goals that can be attained through elections, very limited ones, as you will see very soon if we can greet with great joy Alexis Tsipras as the new Prime Minister of Greece, you know, in June. And um, what he would be able to do won't be what he would like to do. That's clear. Yes, we help. Yes, absolutely. And we should help. And, uh, you know, the thing is that, that, that we have to take the enemy very seriously, and also we have to take our desires very seriously. So our weakness and our disorganization, quite right, yes, the right is well, well, they are the power. Obviously they are well organized. And our force also is in our not being organized. Okay? And we won't, we won't function like an army, we won't function like an apparat, we won't function like a dispositive. We cannot be outguessed by them, and that's the power of the weak. Good. And um, the power of the oppressed. We have our own kind of power. And, but we have to understand ourselves, we take our desires seriously. We should not think that what we desire is a utopia. Is it impossible? We shouldn't think about it. We should think about it. For the, very serious reason, because we have to have the pleasure of expressing our desires, of thinking about them, and of desiring, actually doing the desiring. Yes. And if we desire revolution, that should be in, in our thoughts. Just one more sentence, and then I'll leave out two more opportunities to speak. Right? And so, and uh, at the same time, at the same time, we should take seriously. Uh, uh, capitalism as a legal system, as a system of calculating the economy in a mathematical way, the way in which knowledge and the spirit is colonized by capitalism and used to increase uh, the profits and plus value. It is a destructive and a creative force which we should play with, understand, take seriously, and uh, not think that it is an occult conspiracy somewhere in the back room. It's there out in the open, including, unfortunately, our own heads.